Hey guys, welcome back to Task and Purpose. I'm your average infantryman, Chris Cappy. The Russian VSS Vinterez is the one bizarre infantry weapon in their entire military arsenal that has zero equivalent in the US Army. It's a highly specialized weapon that was once reserved for Moscow's elite Spetsnaz troops. This is a sneaky ninja of a weapon. On May 16, 2015, the Ukrainian military actually captured and wounded two Russian soldiers who, well, they claimed they'd been discharged already and that they had no affiliation with the Russian military anymore. But the Ukrainian investigators dug a little deeper and they found out that these were actually troops that were part of the GRU special purpose units. During their firefight, they were captured and one Ukrainian soldier was KIA and two were wounded. So they want us to believe they were just there on war vacation, right? These Russian soldiers were captured using the VSS Vinteres. That's what they had on them. Of course, as seen in this picture of a Ukrainian military commander showing off the captured weapon. So why did they choose this strange rifle for this specific mission? And why is the Russian military the only ones in the entire world that include this type of weapon in their platoon since the 1980s? We're going to analyze all of this right after this quick message from our sponsor. In the military, it's important to have solid comms. That's why I use this video's sponsor, Raycon Earbuds. These really help me get the most out of my workouts. I've been using them for over two months now, and they never fall out when I'm running. They were voted best earbud of 2021 in Esquire magazine. Raycon's customers love them with 37,000 five-star reviews. They have nearly double the battery life of other brands with a total of 54 hours and they cost half the price of competitors. I could hear the difference in the fitness earbuds. It has the power of the premium sound smart tech. Raycon offers different sound profiles plus three layers of customization. They understand no two earbuds are identical, so they have a unique build, interchangeable gel tops, and new ear stabilizers, so they sit securely Purely, and they never fall out, not ever. Can I get a hoo? These help if you're like me, sometimes you like to aggressively just chill. Raycon offers wireless charging, noise isolation, plus they're waterproof. Raycon's having a special fitness sale. You can now get the fitness earbuds for $20 off and you can make it even sweeter. My viewers get an extra 15% off with my code task and purpose. This is a limited time offer, so grab it today. You guys are really gonna like it. It's an easily identifiable gun with a strange silhouette, thanks to its uncanny thick barrel. So it's designated the VSS as a marksman rifle, even though VSS stands for Special Sniper Rifle. So is it a sniper rifle or not, Russia? What's going on here? To be honest, I can already think of a dozen problems that would come up with having this type of weapon, including it having no range and no stopping power. Maybe finding out where the VSS came from will help shed some light on this weapon system. So the weapon began development in the early 1980s in the Soviet Union, partly at the Tashnyov Tashmash Central Institute for Precision Machine Building. Even its origins are shrouded in mystery because it was developed and influenced by the legendary Russian Spetsnaz units. Now the Spetsnaz had another option in their arsenal, the Dragunov sniper rifle, which is a great sniper rifle, but it wasn't suppressed. So you could see how the Spetsnaz didn't really vibe with that. Basically in the 1960s, Russian SF wanted a weapon that could fire beyond 300 meters accurately and quietly. So Russian special ops wanted something that could fill the gap and keep things quiet for clandestine operations. The VSS would be manufactured at the famous Tola Arms plant along with its sister rifle, the ASVAL, which has 70 to 75% of its parts in common with the Vinteres. For that reason, I'll be showing both weapons in this video kind of interchangeably. The designers, Petrov Serdyovkyov and Vladimir Krasnikov, worked with Spetsnaz soldiers to design the VSS and ASVAL. The weapons creator had this to say about it, quote, both passed their baptism of fire during Chechnya campaigns. The name Vinteres comes from the code name it was given in development to try to fool us pesky Westerners. Translated, it means thread cutter. The code name stuck and basically became its nickname. Typical of Russian design, you can clearly see it was modeled off the AK pattern. The weapon had a lot of issues in the development phase though. For instance, they couldn't get the rifle to be quiet enough. They thought just using subsonic ammo alone would work. However, the accuracy and range was extremely flawed when they did that. They also tried using a meter long suppressor with subsonic ammo, but they couldn't get the round itself to be quiet, so the shooter would remain hidden, but enemies downrange would hear the crack of the round go past. This was no good for covert ops. Even worse, after the developers made some progress, the whole Soviet military switched to the 545mm round, and they wanted the Vinteres to be able to fire that too. So the developers had to go back and rethink everything. There was even a prototype testing in the Soviet Afghanistan war that turned out to be a giant flop. I think what finally cracked the case for them was figuring out the right type of heavier bullet to use in the ammunition 
that allowed them to get all the right capabilities into this system. I think you can actually argue the Soviets had a real edge over NATO in the 1980s in the area of purpose-built suppressed sniper rifles. The Soviet military wanted to be able to take out more well-equipped NATO soldiers who had better helmets and body armor. They wanted to offset the technological advantage of their adversaries. It was originally intended for use by the KGB. In fact, it was made in direct response to the fact that NATO forces were increasingly starting to use Kevlar body armor, and Russian SF teams actually directly requested from the military that they create a silent weapon that was able to penetrate their enemy's armor while at the same time giving them a high rate of fire for any possible scenario that they might encounter in a covert infiltration operation. Before the VSS was in service, Spetsnaz, which stands for Special Purpose Military Units, were relying on a suppressed AK-74 or suppressed AKMs. But this method of repurposing weapons that were already in their arsenal meant that they needed to fire a special subsonic ammo. This subsonic ammo was only accurate to 200 meters, and to make matters worse, they specifically modified AKs could only fire 200 rounds before the wear and tear meant that the rubber baffles inside the suppressors needed to be replaced. As a brief explanation, subsonic ammunition is modified ammo that flies slower than the speed of sound. Ammo flying faster than the speed of sound, or supersonic, breaks the sound barrier and makes a loud crack. When you slow down your ammo to subsonic ranges, you make your bullets less noisy. But what are its specifications, and how do Russian soldiers use the weapons in combat? They drilled four rows of nine holes into the 7.9 inch barrel that's suppressed, which follows the rifling and allows gas to escape the barrel behind the projectile. The muzzle report is as low as 130 dB. I've had farts louder than that. The rifle used a similar long stroke gas system, and the piston is located above the barrel. Unlike AKs though, this rifle had its fire selector behind the trigger. And much of the VSSS internal mechanisms are different as it makes use of a six lug rotating bolt. It also has no muzzle flash. But the true magic of the weapon comes down to its ammo, the long nine by 39 millimeter subsonic round. The nine by 39 cartridge is a large bullet. When most people think of nine millimeter, they think of pistol caliber bullets but most of those are around 9x19 or 9x18. The VSS cartridge is the same length as the typical 7.62x39mm AK rifle cartridge, only wider at 9mm. So think of this bullet as a scaled up AK bullet. The large size of this bullet helps it be subsonic by default, but still retain a great amount of energy on target. The round can penetrate 6 millimeters of steel at 100 meters distance, and has an effective range of 400 meters against the 6B2 soft flak jackets, which were the most popular body armor of the mid-1980s. This weapon's max range might be 400 meters, but its sweet spot is really in the 300 meter range. For some comparison, your regular sniper rifles are able to hit targets at 800 meters and beyond. It weighs a glorious 5.73 pounds, which is a full two pounds lighter than the M4. Its overall length is only 35.2 inches. The muzzle velocity is of course low at 925 feet per second. What are the Russian infantry tactics and doctrine that go along with this weapon? It's been used extensively in urban environments because it's compact, semi-auto, and large magazine capacity of 20 rounds, which is a lot for a sniper rifle. Russian soldiers are able to use it and almost fight like any other rifleman. It was first used in the final days of the Soviet invasion of Afghanistan during the 1980s, where it was first combat tested. It was later used in the Chechen War, where it really earned its stellar reputation. By the year 1993, these weapons were still incredibly rare in the Russian military. A Russian reconnaissance officer said, quote, the VSSS were mostly in the GRU Special Forces Brigades, and then in very limited numbers, and knowing about the capabilities of these silent trunks, no one wanted to share. So that was roughly translated from Russian to English, but I think the gist of what the Russian officer was saying there is that these weapons were hard to come by. Turns out it's not just the Russian military that uses it though. The weapon is also used by the SBU Alpha Group of the Ukrainian military. The SBU in Ukraine is an elite special operations unit that was actually originally created by the KGB, but now of course fights against Russia today. The Indian Marine Commandos are also outfitted with this weapon. It has been used by the Russian Mafia to assassinate mobster Alsan Osan. On the 16th of January in 2013, he was leaving his restaurant, which was also his office, with his bodyguards. The Russian sniper was on the sixth floor of a nearby apartment building. He fired six shots 
and found his mark. This leads me perfectly to this quote by the Spetsnaz, it's the perfect weapon for black ops. It's designated for one shot, one kill situations, but it also works well if things go south and you need to use its rapid fire abilities. I think the reason the US military doesn't have a similar weapon for rank and file troops is because they felt the M4 with the 5.56 was close enough of a solution to what the VSS is and it has extra rounds. The US military and NATO are laser focused on not adding new types of ammo to their logistics train. This would have to complicate supply by adding a whole new ammo type and it would only be for a very narrow mission set. It has, however, had a newer version of it built called the VSSM. The M stands for modernized. At a glance, the VSSM looks different, although it keeps the same features. Picatinny rail mounts along the suppressor are also there to now allow for lights, sights, and lasers. This rifle is also more reliable. The most cutting edge new feature is the new optic on it. I don't think the Vinterez is going anywhere, especially with it just having had a makeover. It is disadvantaged by its lack of reach that most sniper rifles enjoy, but does have a lot of other advantages over other sniper rifles. So what do you guys think of the VSS? What do you think of the US Army not having a similar weapon for their rank and file troops? 